Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor James Corthals, and once again, it's my privilege to be here with you to share God's word. This morning, we'll be following the order of worship on page 15, the common service in the front of your hymnal. Let's now begin with our first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with the true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us, Christ, have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high, and on earth is the will toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you. We glorify you, we give thanks to you for your Glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, the spirit to think and do what is right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may by your help be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah, where in the 40th chapter we begin in the 27th verse. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of our Lord. The epistle for, or the psalm this morning is Psalm 51, beginning there in verse 15. Lord, open my lips and my, mouths will, my mouth will declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and crushed heart, O God, you will not despise. The word of our Lord. The epistle lesson this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the Galatians, the sixth chapter, beginning there in the first verse. And this will also serve as our sermon text this morning. The Apostle writes, Brothers, if a person is caught in some trespass, you who are spiritual should restore such a person in a spirit of humility. 
carefully watching yourself so that you are not also tempted. Bear one another's burdens and in this way fulfill the law of Christ. For if someone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Let each person test his own work and then he will take pride in regard to himself and not his neighbor. For each man will bear his own burden. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with his teacher. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. To be sure, whatever a man sows, he will also reap. Indeed, the one who sows for his own sinful flesh will reap destruction from the sinful flesh. But the one who sows for the Spirit will reap eternal life from the Spirit. Let us not become weary of doing good, because at the appointed time we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the household of faith. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. In fact, in Christ Jesus, circumcision or uncircumcision does not matter. What matters is being a new creation. Peace and mercy on those who follow this rule, namely, on the Israel of God, the word of our Lord. Hallelujah. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Alleluia. Please stand for the Gospel. The Holy Gospel in Luke chapter 10. Just then, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he asked him. What do you read there? He replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. It just so happened that a priest was going down that way. But when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also happened to go there, but when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. A Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was. When he saw him, he felt sorry for the man. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. He put him on his own animal, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day when he left, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. Whatever extra you spend, I will repay you when I return. Which of these three do you think acted like a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? The one who showed mercy to him, he replied. Then Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of our Lord. Having heard the word of God, let us now join in making confession of our faith, using as our confession this morning the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it on page 19 in the front of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn. Grace and mercy and peace are yours from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word for our consideration this morning is the epistle lesson which you heard read a few moments ago. Permit me at this time to reread one verse. Paul writes, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who keeps his promises to us each and every day, Christian friends. Picture with me this morning this scene. The Sunday service has just gotten over. The, the organist is busy putting away her music. And if it had been a communion Sunday, you'd see a member of the altar guild taking care of the communion ware. The elder on duty on this particular Sunday would be carrying out his responsibilities, and, and the ushers are, are preparing to 
lock up the church. Now, one of their responsibilities is to go through the pews, you know, straighten out the hymnals, look for any lost items, items that have been left behind, and pick up the used bulletins. But then suddenly you hear the sound of, of young voices. And you see young heads bobbing up and down as they race up and down the pews. Their goal is not to make noise and create chaos. No, their goal is to pick up those used bulletins and, and hand them to their father, who is one of the ushers. It's, it's not work for them. It's not a job. It's something that they find great joy in doing. And as they gather those bulletins together, you can see the, the big smile on their face as they hand the wad of those used bulletins to the one that they lovingly call dad. Now when you see those smiles, you don't have to ask yourself, why are they doing the things that they are doing? But what about us? We've come here to, to church this morning, and hopefully it's for doing more than just collecting used bulletins. But as soon as the service is over, we'll be leaving and getting involved in other things. So whether we're connected to something going on here in church or connected to, to something that, that's taking place outside of these walls, we have to ask ourselves, why are we doing the things that we do? Are we doing them out of a sense of burden, uh, a sense of guilt perhaps? Or are we doing them out of joy for someone. Why are we doing the things that we do? do? Do we do the things that we do because we we feel that it's a burden that we have to bear? The Apostle Paul this morning reminds us of a command that God gives us to share in each other's burdens. The Apostle writes, Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. The church has often been described as a family. And even though we're not all biologically related to each other, it's true that we feel united, we feel together. We're united because of our faith in our Savior Jesus Christ, that faith which gives us comfort and joy in our lives. In fact, the Bible says that all believers are part of the body of Christ. But even though we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we're still on this side of eternity, and so we're going to have to deal with our sinful human nature. Since we're not yet in the perfection of heaven, it's safe to say that we still have a tendency to sin. And because of that tendency to sin, we oftentimes find ourselves doing things which God has told us not to do. Oh, the Lord is very clear. And, and yet, the things that we know that we should do, oftentimes we have great difficulty in doing them. And at the same time, the things that we should not do, we so easily fall into doing. Now, perhaps part of the problem is the way that we look at sin. We, we have a tendency to think of sins in terms of big and small. For example, we break the speed limit and we say, no, no big deal. After all, everybody does it. But if we were to break into a store and steal something, that's an entirely different matter. 
Or we might think, well, when I'm watching that movie and the violence and the sexuality there, oh, my, my thoughts aren't that big of a deal. But if I would put them into action, that would be a real problem. Or if I would say something behind a friend's back, I might not think too much about that. Why would I be embarrassed if my friend heard what I was saying? But God looks at sins differently. God doesn't look in terms of big and small. Sin is sin for God. And when we recognize that fact, our conscience condemns us. Because our conscience knows that, that we have sinned against a righteous and a holy God. Our conscience condemns us, and we would be weighed down by a burden of guilt until such a time that we confessed our sins, repented to God, and received his forgiveness. What are we to do? But spiritual matters aren't the only burdens that we bear. We also bear physical burdens. And the Lord encourages us to help one another. Husband and wife argue. Parents and children argue and speak harsh words and, and bitter feelings result. What are we to do? Or on the job. The boss expects so much of us and so little of himself. Or our co-workers, they sort of ignore some of their responsibilities and they fall back into our lap. The economy goes bad and, and we lose our job. Our health begins to fail and, and we have no idea what the future has in store for us. What are we to do? if we are to share in each other's burdens. The Apostle Paul tells us that we are to restore our brothers and sisters gently. We, we are to restore them with a sense of humility. Now, who? To whom are we to show this gentleness? Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippians, let your gentleness be evident to all. So not to a select few, but to all. And what are we to do? Well, Paul in Colossians says, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, patience, bear with each other and forgive one another, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So what can we do? Well, we can forgive those who have sinned against us just as God continues to forgive us our sins. And as we are able, we can help others with their physical difficulties as well. It's what we do. It's the Christian thing to do, we might say. But my friends, the question before us this morning is not what should we do, but why do we do the things that we do? Maybe we think that we do the things that we do because it's expected of us. After all, I want people to understand who I am, and so I want to demonstrate that I am a Christian. You might get that idea when Paul says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Or maybe we do the things that we do because we believe that if we do something now, maybe we'll get something back. Somebody will repay us in the future. Again, you might get that idea when Paul says, a man reaps what he sows, the one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, 
For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Or maybe we do something simply because we're thankful. You know, uh, we don't have the problems that other people have in their family life. We don't have problems at work. Our health is perfectly fine. And we get a little sense of superiority that I'm better than those people that I should help. My friends, if those are the reasons that we do the things that we do, then we're doing them for the wrong reason. In fact, the Apostle Paul is rather blunt with us this morning. He speaks a stern warning when he says, Watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else, for each one should carry their own load. Okay, we, we still agree that we should carry each other's burdens as the Lord has directed us to do. But the question still remains, why do we do it? What, what's our reason for doing the things that we do? The first thing that we recognize is that we're not doing these things for ourselves, to make ourselves look good. In order to carry somebody else's burdens, you are doing something for someone. That's why the Apostle Paul warns us the way he does. That, that we don't become so self-centered that, that we begin to think that everything that we do is making us look good. No, we do the things that we do for someone but again, that's very difficult. That's why Paul says that we do what we do for someone because of someone else. It's because of Jesus. The one who loved us. Scripture tells us we love him because he first loved us. We share in each other's burdens because of the Savior having already taken our burdens upon himself. That's why the Apostle Paul says, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if you would compare the entire letter to the Galatians, you would see that this is a point that Paul has been making over and over again. Pointing us to the Savior Jesus Christ as the center of all that we say and do. May I never boast except in the cross of Christ. It is Jesus who has not only demonstrated for us what we should do, but it is Jesus who has forgiven our sins and made it possible for us to do things which are helpful to our neighbor and pleasing to God. You know, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, I'm sure that there were many people who said that he was a loser. But we know better. For Christ demonstrated by his resurrection from death that he was the victor over sin, death, and the devil. And it's that Savior who continues to work in us each and every day. God wants to make us a new creation. Paul says, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Maybe you have know someone, or maybe you've experienced this yourself. You, you have a, a remodeling project, 
that just seems to go on and on and on. You remodel one thing and that causes you to say, well then I, I've got to remodel this as well. I wonder sometimes if that isn't how God looks at us. That we are a lifetime remodeling project. God began that project when we were baptized. The washing of baptism brought us into his family. And ever since that time, God continues to work in us so that he can also work through us. He works in us through his word. For the Holy Spirit works through the word to help us understand what it is that we are to do. The Lord also has given us his Holy Supper and again, the Holy Spirit works through the sacrament of the Lord's Supper to strengthen us in our faith. All so that God may continue to work in us, to make us that new creation. People who are able and willing to share in each other's burdens. By ourselves, we could never do it. Our, our sinful nature would constantly get in the way of us doing things for the right reason. But God in his mercy continues to shower his love upon us so that we also understand that the things that we do, we do not for ourselves, but we do them to give glory to God who has done so very much for us. Jesus in the gospel lesson this morning ended by telling the young man to go and do likewise. The Lord tells us to share in each other's burdens. And in doing so, may God help us to reflect the love of Jesus in our lives. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding keep our hearts and lives through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for prayer.
Lord God, as Satan continues to attack us in these last days, keep us from faltering in the face of his fury, but help us to boldly proclaim Christ's name. Heavenly Father, keep us in your Son's humble way, that we may not think we are something when we are nothing. Help us to sow the Spirit freely, that we might know the joy of walking in your Son's giving and forgiving way. Dear Lord, all who journey on earth, sea, and air do so under your watchful eye. Keep all those who travel during these summer months in your almighty care, that their journeys may be safe and their homecomings joyful. Be near to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Grant them health and healing according to your perfect will. Help us not to grow weary of doing good to everyone, especially our brothers and sisters in the household of faith. Dear Savior, you have promised that we shall be comforted, knowing all that you have done in order to win for us the forgiveness of our sins. Sustain us as you sustain the believers who came before us, that we may safely journey through the trials of this present age into the joys that await us with you. Into your hands, dear Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In the name of Jesus, we join to pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn.
We stand for prayer. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and building up of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our final hymn.